Hello and welcome to the first entry in what I'll be calling the series where we unpack the most obscure and hard to find references, illusions, and little treasures left for us by the creators of Metal Gear Solid. We'll be starting to unpack this stealth series with the first game, which came out in 1998, leaving aside, of course, the MSX titles, which came out in the 1980s and early 90s. The first place to begin is with the docks setting that the game gives us at the start, which is, for my money, a nod to the Tokugawa moon base from Police Knots. The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. A nuclear weapon? I'm afraid so. You see, the island is the site of a secret nuclear weapons disposal facility. The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Seattle Moses Island was built at the beginning of this century. It was made only to temporarily store the nuclear warheads. Why? If they wanted to dispose of them, why wouldn't they just dismantle them right away? They cannot do that. You see, when you dismantle a warhead, you still have nuclear materials that must be stored. At this point, all of the nuclear material storage facilities are way past capacity. But they could not stop dismantling weapons while at the same time pushing START 2. So you're telling me that this base was built so they could temporarily avoid being in conflict with START 2? <laughs> ますます怪しいな。But what is this place? I don't think it's just a nuclear weapons disposal facility. Boy, oh boy, it's just like them. Nobody told you anything, did they? Okay. You see, this place isn't really for disposing nuclear weapons. This base is owned and operated by a dummy corporation of arms tech. This is a civilian base? Right, for the development of Metal Gear. Colonel. We'll be finding a lot of commonalities with Police Knots and MGS-1, actually. There's even a full-blown scene from Police Knots that shows up in MGS-1 when you talk with Otacon for the first time. な、な、なんだよ、こいつら。これじゃまるでアニメじゃないか。Whose footprints are these? Down from the very small detail level, like this steam grate, which seems to conjure to mind images from the beginning of Police Knots. To bigger picture stuff, MGS-1's characters, many of them anyway, seem very similar in design to those from Police Knots.
Rex is in the underground maintenance base. Where's that? Yoshi, lock system ni ID o sashi konde mi o. ID o sashi konde. Oh, Jonathan, tobi ra ga ita zo. Shikashi, kore dake no security ga ID dake de akuto wa miou da na. Edo, kini shi sugi da. But of course, the Tokugawa Corporation was not the only evil entity in Kojima's games to use a multi-layer layer. In Snatcher, the evil Bioroid menace, Snatchers, use a very similar layer to the Shadow Moses facility, which in their case is disguised as a hospital. In MGS1, it's disguised as a nuclear disposal site. As we can see here in this map provided by Metal Gear Explorer Bad Humans, calling frequency 140.07 at any of these 11 spots in the docks will provide developer commentary in Japanese. Thanks to translators like Twitter user Kubrick Yaku, we in the West are finally starting to get some of this more region specific content in English. I'll read a random one now. This is from MGS1 programmer Makoto Sonoyama. A variety of weapons and items, an overhead view, first person view, intrude mode, behind mode, ducking, crawling, sticking to walls. It, it was really challenging to have seamless play incorporating all of these conditions without any issues. I'd be really happy if you're left with a positive impression of the control system." End quote. A huge area with lots of missable or hard to unlock content in any Metal Gear game has to be the codec, with its context specific radio calls. In the second stage of the game, the helipad, KCE Japan were providing us a vertical slice for the entire game in microcosm. As such, what I didn't realize for years is just how full of context specific radio calls the heliport is. Here are just some examples. There's no turning back now, Snake. You've got a job to do, and you're our only hope. The world is counting on you. Snake, they're using a searchlight to sweep the area. Make sure you stay out of the beam. It looks like a cargo truck. They must use it for transporting goods around the base. Snake, you'll never be able to get through the front door. Find some other way to get in. One fun little detail to the first fifth or so of MGS1 that you may have missed relates to Snake's mission performance. Snake, your mission is to infiltrate, not to fight. Don't let the enemy see you. You didn't waste any time in getting spotted, did you? Too bad. Looks like your cover is blown. Proceed with extreme caution. There's slightly different radio calls and conversations with both Colonel Campbell and Revolver Ocelot, depending on how long you've taken and how quietly you've infiltrated. Then there's the completely optional support character, Nastasha Romanenko. Much like Mei Ling in charge of your save data, Nastasha is a character that you'll get to know and get to divulge more about herself through sustained interaction. But in Nastasha's case, you have to call quite a lot to get some fairly crucial intel on the rationale, say, behind Rex's development, and how that relates to nuclear stealth submarines like the kind that we were writing at the start of the game. And speaking of the start, this optional secret scene unlocks instead if you, as Snake, decide to quit the pre-mission briefing right away. I told you, even if I do owe you, I don't owe anything to this army or this country. You will accept this assignment. Why should I be stupid enough to do that? I'm no patriot. Snake, there's enough dirt in your file from your days as an agent to keep you in the stockade until you're a very old man. Oh, I see. Blackmail. No, Snake. I prefer to look at it as helping you come to a decision more easily. But anyway, I know you better than that. You'd take this assignment even without the threat. Why do you say that? You're a natural-born soldier. 
You're not the grow old gracefully type. It's the same for all of us who've seen real action. The only place we can feel truly alive is on the battlefield. I'm a soldier too. I know those feelings of powerlessness, frustration that you feel every day. You've tried to play the Boy Scout out there in Alaska, but you can't race dogs in the snow forever. Why don't you come back to us and be a soldier again? You think my life is some kind of a joke? Snake, I just want to give you back your purpose in life. But there are probably as many, if not more, nods in Metal Gear Solid to the MSX era of Metal Gear. Many of the gameplay scenarios, particularly from Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, would be essentially remade in 3D for a Metal Gear Solid 1. any place on the face of the earth. A nuclear equipped walking battle tank. Metal Gear. It can't be. There are huge commonalities between characters like Naomi and Chris Goldwyn or Karen Hojo from Police Stunts. These tortured women with dark pasts never really fit into the broad category of hero or villain. They're complex. They're well-rounded, they're three-dimensional in ways that only Hideo Kojima characters can be. And of course, all three games, Snatcher, Police Knots, and Metal Gear Solid, contain investigation elements. I told you, even if I do owe you, I don't owe anything to this army or this country. You will accept this assignment. Why should I be stupid enough to do that? I'm no patriot. After all, as Snake, you have to get intel before you can stop the terrorists from launching the nuke. This is kind of similar to how a huge portion of Snatcher and Police Dots is spent just tracking down the truth before you can do anything about it. And of course, police knots like MGS-1 would feature a protagonist who used a laser sight pistol and smoked cigarettes. And another nod to stature we find in how Snake, much like Gillian Seed, the protagonist from that game, can catch a cold. Snake, Naomi wants to talk to you. How do you feel, Snake? Well, to tell you the truth, I think I'm catching a cold. I'm monitoring you via the nanomachines. Your body temperature is elevated and your lymph nodes are slightly swollen. But don't worry, it appears to be just a mild rhinovirus. Uh, I guess I got it from that soldier. I've increased your nutrition and elevated your blood sugar level. You can't cure it? Sorry, Snake. The nanomachines don't carry antibiotics. Maybe you could find some garlic. It contains natural antibiotics, you know. Vitamins and minerals, too. Ugh, raw garlic. Give me a break. There must be some cold medicine somewhere on the base. That would make you feel better. If not, you'll just have to wait until your body's natural defenses take over. You caught a cold, Snake? In battle, you need to be in top physical condition. Do you have any cold medicine? Is there any cold medicine on this base? What's wrong, Snake? You caught a cold? I think there's some in the commander's room. There's a pharmaceutical storage room in the southwest of the first floor basement of the Warhead storage building. There are other types of drugs there, too. 
I gave directions to another soldier who had caught a cold. Well, it looks like he gave the call to me. Oh, he's a limb that has but a disease. Mortal to cut it off. To cure it, easy. Snake, you caught a cold, didn't you? Don't you think you'd better take some cold medicine at least? Or for that matter, how Master Miller has been snatched by the enemy. Secretly, Liquid Snake in disguise. I moved out here for some peace and quiet. And of course, we can draw a clear parallel between the Genome Army and the so-called Frozeners from Police Knots, the genetically enhanced super soldiers, more prepared for space operations. And all three games focus on what we might call an undetectable threat, whether that be Snatchers, K9, or Metal Gear Rex's nuke. But Snake, I found something else. What? The secret behind the new nuclear weapon. Just as I thought, the nuclear warhead is designed to be fired from the railgun like a projectile. It doesn't use fuel, so it isn't considered a missile. That way it can get around all sorts of international treaties. これまで徳川は皆様に数々の麻薬偽装輸送システムDDSを軽視リーズ中心に提供してまいりました。K1から K8 満足させる結果には及びませんでした。しかし、今回のケーシリーズの最新作DDSは、これまでのそういった問題を全てクリアしうる可能性を秘めた商品です。Pretty sneaky. ナークカプセル、K9なのです。では、K9のすぐれた偽装システムをご説明しましょう。ナークカプセルの特徴は、薬剤を包むカプセルのゼラチンの中にナークをプログラムしているところにあります。ですから、新薬、大衆薬を問
2013年コロニーへの一般市民の移住に伴い数十万の移住者たちの治安を守るため俺たち5人の宇宙訓練を受けた警官が選抜された世界中の警察からえりすぐられた俺たちは警察権限を持つ宇宙飛行士としてポリスノーツと呼ばれたイギリススコットランドヤードからゲイツベッカー日本の警視庁からジョセフ・サダオキ・トクナウアメリカ・ニューヨーク市警からサルバトーレ・トスカニーノそしてロサンゼルス市警から俺とエド・ブラウン「ハイテクスペシャルフォースユニットフォックスハウンド」Your former unit, and one that I was a commander of. An elite group combining firepower and expertise. They're every bit as good as when I was commanding them. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity Psycho Mattis, with his powerful psychic abilities, Sniper Wolf, the beautiful and deadly sharpshooter, Decoy Octopus. Master of Disguise, Vulcan Raven, Giant and Shaman, and Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. Looks like a lovely bunch of folks. Too bad we'll be meeting under these circumstances. And finally, for this entry, Otacon's office is actually the KCE Japan office where they made this game, in one of the first, perhaps, of many, many infamous fourth wall breaks. It's also important to be able to control your bodily functions. You never know when a long demo is about to begin. So make sure you're prepared to sit in front of the monitor for a long time if necessary. Well, that does it for this entry. This is a little more casual of a sort of series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any I missed or you want to see next time, make sure you leave it in the comments. Until next time, boss.